Hi, my name is Joy LePage Smith, and I have a story for you. It's about a little mountain goat who is afraid of high places. Now, I have written many articles and books for grown-ups, but this is a story for young people. You will have fun seeing it, and you'll learn some wonderful things. So let's watch and listen to the story of the little mountain goat who is afraid of high places. The Little Mountain Goat Who Was Afraid of High Places Written by Chaplain Joy LePage Smith Illustrated by Christine Irwin Sib pushes himself away from his mother, stands up on wobbly legs, and begins to take his first steps. He is a mountain goat born high in the Rocky Mountains of Idaho, along with his twin brother Bill. For the next few hours, Sib tries his new legs ever so carefully. Soon he is walking and then jumping about in the meadow near the cave where he was born. The day would come for him to climb, but not just yet. One afternoon, the rays of sunlight are especially warm on Sib's thick white coat. He feels wonderful. Although it is too soon for him to be far from his mother, Sib is feeling frisky and longs to explore. He bolts happily away right along a high rocky ledge. Below he sees some neighbor goats frolicking about. They are having great fun and Sib wants to join them. Something inside tells him to wait, that he is not ready to make such a long leap. But Sib jumps anyway. His little body hurtles through the air and then lands with a sudden thud. Stunned and hurting, he lies very still, like a patch of white snow on the ragged rocks. One weak little bleat comes out of Sib's throat as he calls for help. Mama. Mama Goat comes running, leaping to his side. She checks Sib over. Seeing he is not seriously injured, she says, Oh, I wish you had waited. In just a few days, you would have been ready. Sib stays in the meadow and rests for the next week while his cuts and bruises heal. Then one morning, Mama Goat says, You are better now, Sib. It's time for you to try climbing again. Papa and I will help you. Sib is very afraid. Now he knows what it is like to fall hard on sharp rocks, and he never wants that to happen again. Mama Goat nudges him gently, beckoning for Papa to help. The two of them begin nudging Sib away from the safe, quiet meadow toward a higher ledge. Mama Goat says, Don't think about falling. Just have faith. Trust the little hooves God made for you. You need to understand how as mountain goats, we have cloven hooves. This means each hoof has two toes. Sib, these toes spread wide as you step down on them. This helps you keep your balance as you step up on a rock and then down on another rock. Your hooves are made to grasp the rocks. You can even run and jump on them. Look at my hoof. Mama Goat lifts her front leg so he can see the bottom of her hoof. Sib, the hard outer shell of each toe is our nail, much like a horse's hoof. Inside the nail, we have a rubbery pad with a very rough surface. It sticks out a little further than the bottom edge of the nail to press against slippery ice and smooth rocks so we don't slip. When we step on rocks, the hard outer shell snags on jagged edges, while the pad shapes itself to the rough surface, gripping it firmly. Our two separate toes allow our feet to adjust and grab onto small, uneven ledges. Sib, God designed all of these special features into our hooves so we are able to climb and move over very steep mountainsides without falling. With a happy look in her eyes, she says, As you practice climbing, you will become more certain of your four hooves 
and how God intended them to work. Before long, you will be running and jumping. Mama Goat tells him, There is no need to worry, Sib. They will keep you from falling. Tomorrow we will try it again. While off by himself the next afternoon, Sib decides he must do this. He must climb. He stands thinking, Now is the time. I can do this. But as soon as Sib's eyes catch a glimpse of the jagged rocks below and the long distance down, his little body hurts at the mere thought of falling. To make matters worse, his brother Bill is climbing all over and seems to have no fear as he moves about from rock to rock on the high mountainside. Sid feels discouraged as he watches his brother far above him playing on rugged peaks. Bill is enjoying every minute of it. He brags loudly so Sib can hear him. Taking a mighty leap, Bill shouts, Hey, Sib, watch me. You'll never be able to do this. Oh, well. Sib shrugs a shoulder and tells himself, Climbing can't be all that great. Trying to believe this, he looks about at the lush green grass and the banks of lovely flowers. The cool, refreshing stream nearby calls out with splashes and gurgles. Rich, velvety moss on the edges promises many a tasty treat. I could stay and play right here forever, and that will be fine, Sib tells himself. Yet he cannot make his fears go away. As he wanders toward home, he remembers what Papa once said. We cannot always live here in the meadow. We will soon have to move across the mountain rocks. Yes, the grass here looks good to you, but I can see how thin it's getting. Winter is coming, and we must be ready to travel about to find more food. Sib wonders about winter. Papa talks about frozen rain, the great winds and deep snows. All this, of course, is hard for him to imagine. Born in the spring, Sib knows only about the sun, gentle breezes, and being free to run and play. No, he cannot understand what winter will be. Yet Sib is sure Papa knows best. He must learn to climb the high places. So Sib decides to try another time to step up on a rock. Then to climb upward like his mother, father, and brother. But fear is a terrible enemy. It causes him to go stiff, freeze, and be stuck in one place. With his hooves planted halfway between a low rock and a higher ledge, Sib locks his legs and bellows out a cry of woe. Ah! Mama and Papa hear him. They bound upward and forward, arriving quickly at Sib's side. First they nuzzle him, making sure Sib knows they are there to help him. Bracing with their muscular shoulders, they heave him gently from rock to rock. Holding him securely from below and alongside, they tell him each step to take. But it seems impossible for Sib. Bill and his friends laugh at him. The next day, they are still laughing at him. They run off in the other direction and refuse to play with him. He tries not to think about how much he is hurting. He hates being called names. He does not like being different. Sib feels uncertain as he looks at his square hooves and wonders. Will they ever work like Papa's, Mama's, and Bill's hooves do? Papa Goat and Mama Goat feel sad for Sib. They want to help, but did not quite know how. Papa Goat says, Somehow Sib must find faith, for it is the only way he will lose his fears. Yet they both know faith is something Sib will have to find on his own. At bedtime, just before saying goodnight, Mama Goat moves very close to Sib and nuzzles him gently with her nose. Sib, dear, she says, We did not just come to the mountain on our own. 
We don't just happen to know that things will be okay when we climb out onto those high peaks. It is the way God made us. Papa Goat's eyes are closed. Sib thinks he is asleep. Then Papa opens one eye, nods, and says, Sib, it will be all right. Just trust. Faith will come. One day, when Papa was away, Mama Goat and his brother Bill, who Sib nicknames Bleep Billy Goat, under his breath, work together with Sib as he attempts to climb. They try very hard, but Sib shakes so much that they must stop. Brother Bill's attitude can make things even worse. At times, he is somewhat helpful, but mostly Bill is mean and ornery. When their parents are not nearby, he butts Sib hard, using his head. He says things like, You are not even trying, Sib. You're a scary cat. Tired of helping you when I could be off playing with my friends. Bill doesn't care at all how hard climbing is for Sib. He doesn't want to lend a shoulder to help. Meanwhile, his parents work very hard for hours. They still cannot get Sib more than a few feet across one big rock. That night, Papa comes home from a long trip into the forest. He says, In the morning, Sib, we are going to take a little climb together. We will go out onto that ledge just above our cave. I will help you make it. Then the two of us will talk. The next morning, Sib is excited. He and Papa are going to do something together, alone. As they leave the cave, Papa uses the muscles of his head and shoulders to nudge Sib firmly as he steps onto the rocks. Sib isn't so afraid now. Papa's great strength is holding him from below. Before long, the two of them move awkwardly, but surely, onto the small flat place Papa spoke of the night before. It is a great moment for Sib, standing with Papa in the cool mountain air. Leaves are rustling. The smells of pine and small animals waft wondrously before his nose. Finally, Papa speaks. He says, Do you see how your body is growing? How much stronger it is getting? Sib nods but waits because he knows Papa isn't finished speaking. Sib, he says, I know you are still having a lot of trouble trying to climb, but there is something you must remember. Just as your body is growing bigger, you are getting stronger inside as well. And the fear is inside. One day it will be crowded out if you keep trying. Never give up, Sib. Faith will come, and it is good. Sib is very quiet, thinking about how great it will be to grow strong inside and not be afraid. How wonderful it will be once he can move high onto mountaintops. He moves a bit closer to the edge of the rocky ledge they are standing on. Planting his feet solidly in front of him, Sib leans backwards to stretch. Just as he does this, a strong gust of wind catches his mane and rocks his small body. Before he can even think, Sib's hooves move fast, clamping down quickly. The soft underside on each hoof grips and holds onto the rocks near the edge. It surprises him not to have fallen. And it is even more of a surprise to find that just at the right moment, his hooves know what to do even without his thinking about them. Sib cries out. Is that how they work? It's almost like they have a mind of their own. Papa, who had been chewing grass from among the rocks, looks up, and Sib can see his father is pleased. Sib, he says, The wind you feel is made by God. The grass I lead you to, the land you feed on, is made by God. Even these rocks we climb are made by him. That is why we call him the Great Creator. This is so much to think about 
that Sib cannot speak for a long time. Finally, he says, Papa, did God make my hooves like Mama says? Oh, yes, Sib, his father says. That is how we know they will hold on to the rocks, even when the rocks are slippery with winter rains. Sib says, I'm afraid my hooves will never walk on ice. Papa throws back his head and laughs. Oh, Sib, you are such a worrier. That is when the strength that is growing inside will help you. Sib feels so good being close to Papa like this. Most of all, he feels full of hope. There's someone stronger than anyone, even Papa. Someone who cares about them and has carefully made them able to do whatever they need to do. As Papa helps Sib move back down the slope toward home, somehow it seems easier than before. He's not so afraid. It is as if faith has already started growing, deep inside where he cannot see it. Sib begins to believe he too will one day be a good climber. The next morning, Sib walks out to a slide of boulders and places one foot up on a medium-sized rock, then stops. He looks around, he looks up, and he looks down. Then his heart starts pounding and his fears return. His head hurts. Rocks are everywhere and winter is coming. Then they will be slick. How will he climb on them then, since it seems impossible for him now? He knows he must try, yet he cannot make himself do it. Maybe tomorrow, Sib tells himself. Just as Sib is backing away, he hears a faint, muffled cry. He cannot see where the sound is coming from, so he stands still and listens. The call comes again. It's my brother, Bill! Sib shouts loudly. Something has happened! He looks around, wondering where Mama and Papa are, but no one is anywhere near. There's no time to go looking for them, since Bill may be hurt. He may even be in great danger. A cougar or a wolf could reach him first. This thought makes Sib shudder. I must go to him. I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it somehow, he exclaims. I must climb. I need to trust my hooves. Sib quickly places one foot on top of a rock. It holds. Very slowly, he tries another step. It holds too. He's not thinking about his fears now. His thoughts are on Bill and how he must get to Bill as fast as possible. As Sib travels across the rocks, step by step, each little hoof holds firmly. He tells himself, Don't look at the whole mountain. Take one step at a time and keep your eyes on where you're going. He has heard his mother say this several times in the past. Today, he is saying it to himself. Sib moves even faster now, yet he is still being careful. After all, he has to make it. Bill needs him. He can't think about his hooves. He has to keep going. Quickly, Sib trusts that his hooves will hold on to these rocks, and they do. The thought, is this what faith is all about? crosses Sib's mind as his feet clamp solidly on the rocks. Well, anyway, it's working. Sib's thoughts flash back to his brother. He says, Oh, I hope Bill is not seriously hurt. I must find him. Pushing past his fear, Sib climbs carefully. Now he hears his brother's cry again. Ah! Turning toward the sound, he sees Bill caught in a crevasse. Must have stepped wrong, Sib says to himself. Two of his legs are stuck. Bill pulls and twists about, trying to move one leg and then the other, but pain stops him. He realizes that he cannot free himself. His legs are jammed in a narrow crack between the rocks. Sib says, Wait, I'm coming. I'll help you. Sib stretches forward and down towards the crevasse. With all his weight bearing on his front hooves, he is amazed at how well they are working. Finally, he reaches his brother. 
As Sid wonders how to help Bill, he remembers his father's words. Sib, our legs carry our weight as we step, placing one hoof at a time. Our shoulders and front legs are large and muscular. This gives us great strength. That is why we are mighty climbers, able to do hard things during difficult times. This gives Sib an idea. Right then, his old fears are no longer looming large like they did in the past. Bill, I think I know how to get you out. Trust me. Sid puts one of his shoulders against Bill's body and pushes with all his might. He moves Bill backward toward a wider place in the long crack between the rocks. Here, Bill lifts one of his legs out. Then he's able to remove the other leg from the crevasse. There! We made it! Sib exclaims. Bill shakes himself. Wow! I was afraid my leg was broken. But it's not. I can put my weight on it. Although his leg is sore, Bill quickly finds he can walk on all four. The two brothers move slowly down the mountain toward home. Sib is not afraid now. Having climbed so well feels wonderful. Sib is pleased with himself. He helped his brother before something bad happened. Sib, I feel bad about the way I've treated you. Bill says with real sadness in his eyes. I have teased you and made fun of you so many times. And today, you saved me. Will you ever forgive me? Yes, Bill, Sib answers. I forgive you. I sure felt mad, though, when you made fun of me and used your head to butt me so hard. But when I heard you calling for help today, there was only one thing that mattered. You are my brother, and I don't want you to be hurt. As they walk on home, Sib thinks, Now I know something about faith, and I have learned to climb. Bill pauses and then says, And I know how much my brother loves me. From that day on, Sib and Bill become the best of friends. Together they run, climb, and play to their heart's content throughout the Rocky Mountains. The end. Yet yeah, truly, it is just the beginning for Sib and Bill.